Okay, so uh, regular viewers of the channel will know that I am somewhat of a culture vulture. I love the arts, particularly the theatre, I have to say. So I'm very excited that Romeo and Juliet is coming back to the West End. I can't wait to see that story again. <laughs> Daniel Bullen, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? And uh, the lead, Romeo, is going to be played by this generation's heartthrob, Tom Holland. Right? And some of you are wondering, why is he this generation's heartthrob? He's five foot six, he's hairless, he looks very uh, uh, what, harmless, innocuous. Uh, but the reason is, is because he's a Chinese psyop, okay? They've been slipping birth control into our water, and all of the women find a little baby uh, praying mantis-like beta cook fuck boys. They are the heartthrobs of this generation, and it's thanks to the Chinese Communist Party. You can take that to the bank. Now, uh, the headline here is that Tom Holland's Romeo has found his Juliet in Francesca Amewe. Amewuda Rivers. Must be Welsh or something, I guess, no? Francesca, Amewuda Rivers, right? Uh, and she says, I'm excited to bring a fresh energy to this story alongside Tom and to welcome new audiences to the theatre. Let's take a look at Tom alongside Franch. Oh, ho, ho! Francesca! Wow. Well, I guess we... I guess we know why Romeo killed himself, eh? I feel like I've seen Francesca before somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> she's Benji. Who remembers Benji? Hi, Benji here, and I'm going to explain what digital blackface is. Yay! I'm sorry, honestly, I do apologize. It's nothing against Francesca. It's not her fault that I had an expectation I had, especially when I saw the name, what's her name, Francesca Llewellyn Bowen or whatever. When I saw that name, I was expecting a young Welsh beauty, a Catherine Zeta-Jones-esque uh, type of lady. And that is wrong of me, honestly. <laughs> Let's face it, the reason that kind of woman always got the roles in films and in theatre for so many generations was because people like Harvey Weinstein were gatekeeping the industry and uh, that's wrong. I don't want to go back to that. I don't want uh, women having to take flabby roles of Alfred Hitchcock in the face, right? But I, I would say this. Are we going too far the other way? Like, if Harvey Weinstein and Alfred Hitchcock type fat, disgusting, blah, were were gatekeeping before, who's doing it now? Have we swung too far the other way? Are there now a legion of uh, Amazonian bull dykes gatekeeping? And they're, they're forcing now Benji, Llewellyn Bowen, and, uh, and, and, uh, and little mantis men like Tom Holland. <laughs> and uh, who else? Uh, Toby Maguire, is he still doing films? That kind of little... I, I don't know. I sometimes just miss uh, the aesthetically pleasing gods of, of a bygone era. You know, people you look at and you just thought, well, that's just impossible. How can you be that beautiful? Now, is that wrong of me? To want Harvey Weinstein to come back? I don't know. I apologize once again. Look, I don't have anything against Tom Holland or Toby Maguire per se, right? Uh, and, you know, God forbid I bump into them anytime soon at one of these events that I will be attending any day now. This channel's getting uncontrollably big, um, so it's only a matter of time. You know, I wouldn't want to bump into Tom Holland at a party and as I loom over him, tower over him, uh, you know, he'd start quivering and have to hide behind Zendaya's 5 foot 10 frame. Um, so I wouldn't want anything like that to happen. Look, all I'm saying is this. 20 years ago, we were given Poindexter here, Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. And you thought, well, it can't get much more effeminate than that. But it was at precisely that moment that the Chinese Communist Party infiltrated Hollywood producers said, hold my vial of estrogen, release the masked boy.
Did you ever see a man that likes a mask as much as him? Like the opposite of uh, the, the intro to the six million dollar man. We can make him shorter, hairlesser, gayer. <laughs> Now, obviously, I'm kidding a little bit when I'm talking about the actors. The actors aren't the main offenders here. Uh, it's obvious that all these nobodies that are in the play, which we're going to take a look at now, uh, they're going to jump at the chance to perform on the West End with Tom Holland, right? Uh, Tom Holland's a big movie star. And Tom Holland as well, uh, I mean, he's probably like a lot of big-time actors. They've got this sort of half-baked notion that no one will ever... Uh, take them seriously until they've done Shakespeare on the West End or on Broadway or something and that way somehow their career is more legitimate. That way mummy and daddy will really love me. But just take a look at this pretentious shit show. You've got Tom Holland as your Romeo and Francesca Llewellyn Bowen as your Juliet. I can live with that. But just take a look at the rest of this madness. In this brave new reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, there are no Montagues and Capulets, but just the two characters of Capulet and Montague, which are the names in the original version of the two patriarchs of the feuding families. But it's 2024, and they've decided that Montague is a woman in this version, and while she doesn't look much like she could be Tom Holland's mother, well, I guess we can let it slide. But I've been told that in this particular version of Romeo and Juliet, Romeo is in fact a Capulet. Yeah, that's Tom Holland's dad. And all this, of course, without mentioning the tediously contrived diversity of the cast. Now, don't worry, I can hear what some of you are saying. You're saying, Danny, why are you so worried about the diversity? Hmm? You're daft racist. But I'm not. I'm really, I'm not. That's not my thing. I'm not worried about the, <laughs> the lady doth protest too much, me thinks, eh? Uh, I'm not worried about the diversity per se, right? Uh, yes, it's true that Romeo and Juliet was written uh, by William Shakespeare, a white Englishman, in the 16th century, and it's about two white families feuding in Verona. <laughs> so all the characters would have been white. Okay, uh, that's not my main issue. Though, I do think that if you're changing the sex and the race of characters and cutting characters out and reinterpreting so many different things and minimalizing uh, the play to the... Uh, the point that he likes to do, Jamie Lloyd, the guy who uh, is directing this reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, I do think at that point, write your own fucking play, you know? However, that really isn't the thing for me. The main thing for me, and it's always about this on The Daniel Boland Show, I'm not so worried about what people do and what people say. I'm always thinking about the motivation. Why do people do what they do? Why do people say what they say? And this guy, Jamie Lloyd, the director of this brave new reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, with his floral head tattoos <laughs> and his lovely hat, do you think he was really looking for... Do you think this was a meritocracy? He was getting the best actors for the part, trying to stay as... Uh, uh, faithful as he could to the original intention and message behind Romeo and Juliet? Or do you think he was, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, huddled in a corner writing in his diary, Juliet is a strong black woman. Montague is a strong black woman. <laughs> Romeo's played by Tom Holland, but... He's a Capulet, and Capulet is a black man, right? Do you not think that this guy... What do you th I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. I just get that vibe. And also, I think we just have to call shit out when we see it. I think we all have a duty. I know people are going to be watching this and saying, Why do you care? Why do you care? It's not that I care. It's that I think you have to call stuff out when you see that it's shit. Modern art and uh, a lot of films and shit that everyone convinces themselves is is highbrow or interesting or uh, artistic. You know, a lot of it is just shit, and you need to have uh, 
a bit of bravery. I'm not saying this is brave. I'm sure most people agree with me with most things I've said here. But you have to call it out. You have to be the boy that sees uh, the Emperor is wearing no clothes at some point. You have to just say, what the fuck is this rubbish? Okay? Just like I did with about Peaky Blinders the other day. There's an unpopular opinion. It's shit. I got like a couple of minutes into the first episode. I, I've uh, Anyway, we're not on about Peaky Blinders tonight. But, um... Well. I think I've made some solid points. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you have liked it. You know, if you've enjoyed this. Uh, check out my Patreon. We've got six new videos up there now. And uh, I'm counting. More on the way. And they're uh, very controversial. Ooh, if you think I've had some hot takes in today's video, you've seen nothing. Right? Some of my most edgy work is on Patreon right now. <sighs> Wouldn't want to miss that. I'll see you in the next one. Get the fuck, get junkie.